Deep inside an old house, an entity lurks. For years, the family believes it's harmless. We call it Casper the Friendly Ghost. Until they unknowingly provoke it. God is my rock. He is my shield. Now, evil is coming. It was very hard to breathe. And the battle for good begins. The walls were bleeding. It came after our grandson. Monster! Monster! In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In the late 80s, Bob Cranmer purchases a home in the neighborhood where he grew up. As a child, I just would peer in the windows from the sidewalk. I always wanted to be part of the house because of what it represented. Success, old style living. But over the years, Bob, his wife, and their four children discover the house has secrets. After our first weeks in the house, we came to the conclusion that we had a ghost. Every light would be on. Things would move, or the water would just turn on out of nowhere. We would hear walking throughout the house, weird noises. Different things would happen, and we just let it go. We didn't think anything about it. We called it Casper the Friendly Ghost. Hey, hey. How are you? Good. In 2004, in spite of her spooky childhood... Hello, honey. How are you? <laughs> Jessica, the eldest, moves back home with her new husband, Tom. This one for you. Hold on, guys. And son, Colin. You got it? Take this one. All right. I always knew there was stuff going on at the house. I guess chalk it up to being an old house, and certain things are going to happen in an old house. I didn't think it was that much of an issue when we'd moved in. You sure this is okay, Dad? You kidding me? I'm the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> I got my whole family together. Glad to be here. <laughs> I love you, honey. I love you, too. David! Yeah? Come here. Do me a favor. Bring this up to your sister's room. OK, sure. Thanks. There's an apartment on top of the house. My dad had offered it so that we could work and save money and be able to eventually buy a house sometime soon. There's a large walk-in closet underneath the staircase. The light is about six feet off the floor, and there's a simple pull chain to turn it off and on. I noticed the chain. It was wrapped around the light. Bob is used to this kind of mysterious activity. But for the first time since living in the house, he decides to take action. I was born and baptized into the Catholic Church. I did have a real strong faith. I took a set of rosary beads. I simply tied them to this chain on the light in the closet. I close the door. I heard something in the closet. It 
It took the rosary beads and wrapped them completely around the light. Alarmed, Bob takes it to the next level. I took my Bible. God is my rock. And I spent about a half an hour in that closet reading scripture. With him I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. God is my stronghold. God keeps me safe from all enemies. This is the word of the Lord. I could feel it when I was in the closet with it. Was it cold? Was it hot? No, but I could feel it there with me. I had crossed the line to where I was interacting with a supernatural being. I wasn't sure where this was going to go. A few nights after settling into their third floor apartment, Tom checks on his stepson, Colin. Jess, everything okay? Jessica! Hey, hey, buddy. Concerned, Tom rushes to tell his wife what he saw. There was something in Colin's room, standing over Colin's bed. I was trying to think of every possible way for it not to be true, because I didn't want to think of something harming Colin. Taking no chances, Bob decides to spend the night in the room praying. strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the armor of God against the evil schemes of the devil. I did that for an hour or so. I laid down on Colin's little bed and I fell asleep. woke up to pounding on the wall. This thing was toying with me. Bob Cranmer has lived with what he believes to be a harmless ghost for years. Until one night, it gets physical. I noticed stinging on my neck. There were scratches. 
that began under my ear came down my neck and across my chest. It became personal. This was serious business. For now, Bob decides not to discuss the experience with his children. I didn't want to concern them. One afternoon, the Cranmer's oldest son, Bobby, is hanging out in the house. something like the wind move as it went past my head and all of a sudden all these pieces of plastic come raining down the whole thing took maybe you know a split second just very fast fearing for the safety of their children the Cranmers invite Father Mike Salvagna, a passionist priest, to bless the home. Put on the full armor of God so that you may take your stand. There is a time to come out and pray and to bless the house, uh, lest the, the devil have more control over a people or a, a location. We bless the house from top to bottom. We want to sanctify the location. Our struggle is not with the flesh and bolus. That was a defining moment because this really could have hurt Bobby. It clearly was dangerous. Our struggle is against the rulers, against the authorities. It had upped its game against us. I knew that there was something else in that house besides what we considered Casper the Friendly Ghost. And against the devil in the darkness. I had a sense that there's a, a big evil force here that has been here a long time. And you could see that this was a, what we call a house infestation. It's uh, spirits that somehow dwell there and uh, they don't leave politely. But I would always encourage Bob and Lisa to hang in there to persevere, be strong, Pray together as a family. God will hear you. Thank you, Father. God bless. He blessed some of the rooms with holy water and so on. I had hoped that simple prayers like that would take care of it. One night, while Jessica's husband and son are out, she finds herself alone in their third floor bedroom. I woke up and I felt like somebody was sitting on me. It was very hard to breathe and then you can't move. I was looking around because that's about all I could do was move my eyes. I saw a dark figure standing at the foot of my bed. I 
just wanted to scream, but I couldn't. For years, unexplainable events have been taking place in the Cranmer family's old house. One night, someone or something pays their daughter Jessica a visit. I woke up and couldn't move. I see a figure at the foot of the bed. You want to believe that you're dreaming, and then you realize that it's real. It's a very, very scary feeling. And I remember trying to scream, but it didn't feel like the words were coming out. how she got up there because I didn't feel like I was screaming so that you, like, anybody could hear me. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Jessica was petrified. She was shaking and crying. <laughs> From that point on, I just, I, I wasn't comfortable. I didn't like going to sleep at night thinking, am I going to wake up and have that happen to me again? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> The family is now beyond worried. News of the haunting reaches the Roman Catholic Bishop of Pittsburgh, who assigns Father Ron Langwin to help. After I spoke with Bob, I felt pretty certain that there was something going on here that needed to be investigated further. I told Bob that this was not going to be an easy fix. Evil is not that easy to overcome. Father Ron says you have two options here. Thank you. Stay and fight, and we will help you through this entire thing, or you can leave. Are we really up for this? We can beat this thing. It's not going to be much longer. I made a decision that we would stay put and we would face the situation. Hey guys, go help your mother in the kitchen. Hey, sweetie. Hi, honey. Oh. oh, look who it is. Up before noon. Oh, morning, sleepyhead. Take a seat. I couldn't sleep. Tossed turn all night. Bobby, what happened? Oh my God. What is that? It's burning. I had three six inch long, like razor kind of scratches. Bob! What? What's the matter? Oh my God. What happened? Did you fall? No. David. Dad, what are you doing? Charlie. Ed, what's wrong? Listen, I want you to go upstairs and watch those scratches. I want to talk to your mother. Is everything OK? Everything's fine. What is happening? I mean, why is this thing coming after our children? It's not just the kids. At least you're safe. Lisa? Lisa? Talk to me. It bit me very hard. I'm going to leave teeth marks. They weren't bite marks like from human teeth. They were actually almost were puncture wounds, like a dog bite. I'm calling Father Mike right now. Bob and Lisa alert Father Mike to the escalating danger. 
he obtained special permission from the diocese to celebrate mass inside the house. There are signs that the entity in your house is demonic. The scratches on your family, that's one of them. The demon. The demon wanted to put fear into that family. But obviously, you don't want children to be uh, very fearful in a home. So let's get started. I celebrate the Mass to sanctify, to drive away the evil spirits. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Let us pray. We had Mass with Father Mike. We had both hoped that he would come and do the blessing on the house, and then it would stop. I'll get it. Hello? Hey, Mom. Hi, honey. Colin wants to come down and say hi to Grandma and Grandpa. Is that okay? Okay. Send him down. Bye. So I send Colin down. There is three flights of steps you have to go down. Colin has just encountered the demonic entity haunting his grandparents' house. Did you hear that? I rushed up the steps to find Colin hyperventilating and shaking. What's the matter? Colin? What happened? Monster! 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 He was screaming monster and pointing to the room. Monster! What happened? Are Take him downstairs. Monster? Let's go. Go downstairs. Let's go. It's okay. Whatever it's okay. appearance this thing took, it clearly terrified him. He couldn't breathe. This thing was drawn to terrify and hurt children. I determined right then and there that I was going to have to move Jessica and Colin uh, out of the house. I always loved that house, no matter what. But I was relieved to get Colin out of the situation. While the demon has forced Jessica and her family out of the house, Bob, Lisa, and their three sons remain. I saw all of this blood on the wall, and it was still wet. You could see where the large drops hit the wall, splattered, and then ran down. Bobby, come here. It was as if to mimic the priests and how they throw holy water throughout the house. The walls were bleeding. 
there's really nothing you can say to try and rationalize how that all got there. Dad, what is this? I don't know. That is definitely a very specific kind of message. What do you do in that situation other than be terrified? At that point in time, I realized that this thing thinks it has won. Again, the family turns to the Catholic Church for help. As this whole situation developed, we reached a point where I was about ready to make a recommendation to the bishop that we should have an exorcism of the place. But before the church will sanction the exorcism, the family must go through one more step. We had to have some type of outside, non-religious, secular verification that things were going on in the house that were supernatural, that this is not psychological. This is, in fact, a demonic entity. In January of 2005, a paranormal research team out of Penn State University arrived to investigate the house. The first thing that happened was Bob took me on a, a tour of the house. I think I showed you everything, I told you all the stories. My role there was to provide some informal psyche vows on the family members. So what do we do? Take me back to the beginning. Where did it start to get bad? Closet. He showed me this closet. As you can see. Where it all started with this chain being wrapped around a light. this really intense feeling. I don't call it psychic or any of that. It's just there was a, a strong feeling that the demon was under there, under the stairs, you know, somehow in that closet. What's behind the steps? Is there another room? I don't know. I never looked. The only way to get in that space is to cut the wall out in the back of the closet, which was not an easy thing to do. Like an altar. They found a piece of paper and it had pictures on it. The drawing looks to be as old as the house, showing its original owner and his family. It also features disturbing images and the name Malik. The name Malik was a family name. Coincidentally, it's one vowel off from Moloch, which is an Old Testament demon that the Canaanites worship that's associated with child sacrifice. This looks like a curse. Would make sense with all that's going on here. Just like a priest can bless any object, people involved in black magic, they can connect evil with any object. That's one of the ways hauntings start. We found the demon's special place. We found its lair. Adam leaves the group to take a moment. 
I tend to be a solitary person, so I wandered off and was on my own, just mulling it over in my head. I was new to all this. I hadn't had any of these experiences before, but I was praying and I was saying, what's going on here, God? In my mind, I suddenly saw these letters just form. I've never had anything like this in my life. This is bizarre. While investigating the evil plaguing the Cranmer family, paranormal experts discover a demon's lair hidden inside their home. This looks like a curse. Adam Bly has never experienced anything like this before. He suddenly struck with a vision of letters floating before his eyes. I suddenly got woozy, a little bit dizzy. Adam, you okay? Dude, you're bleeding. What it looked like is if you took your fingernails and kind of raked them across your forehead hard. Give me a piece of paper. What's that? Where's the laptop? It's in the living room. The letters appear to form a word, Sati. Adam does a search and discovers it's a name. It's said that this name was a demon whose function was to encourage women to sacrifice their children. Your demon? Her name is Sati. She's a consort to Moloch. When Adam revealed the name of the demon and what the demon represented, everything seemed to start falling into place and we were understanding things better. And it also ties back in with what was going on with our grandson, that it, it came after him and with what happened with my own kids. Based on this new revelation, Bob looks through the research he has gathered on the history of his house and land. One story of a tragic massacre that took place near his property immediately stands out. I read of a very violent Indian war that took place in the early 1790s. A woman and her three children Please. had been killed by the Indians some distance from Fort Pitt. Please. Our house was six miles from the fort. I can't believe all this. So much evil. So much death. It's no wonder it attracted a demon. Bob remembers that a tree in his yard has some long forgotten historical significance. This oak tree is several hundred years old. I was told that this tree was a, a memorial to something. To confirm the possibility of bodies on his property, Bob hires professionals. I had the ground scanned by ground penetrating radar. It depicted the exact dimensions of a horizontal grave that had been dug with the remains of what appeared to be four bodies in the ground. But the question remains, how and why did the demon come inside? One theory is that when the house was built, a worker placed a curse on it, giving the demon power to haunt the home. We felt that the evil that precipitated that terrible massacre attached itself 
to our front yard and eventually inhabited the house that was built there. The curse strengthened it. Evil brings out evil. Several months after the investigation, Bob and Lisa receive good news. The church has approved an exorcism of their home. In September 2005, an exorcist arrives to take on the demon. I can only speak in terms of uh, our diocese. I'll be a priest 50 years. And I don't know of any other case where an exorcist was called in. I was hopeful that this was finally going to be brought to some type of conclusion. And after this exorcist came, the house did seem somewhat different. The atmosphere in the house had changed. The house lightened up. Months pass by without incident. I was in the basement adjusting the front of the hot water heater. As I looked up, I saw this entity. Visit DestinationAmerica.com. Several months after an exorcism of the Cranmer house is performed, Bob senses the demon is back. I clearly saw it move, so I knew it was in the basement, and it was in the basement with me. Bob says, I saw something down there. I think we need to have another mask. Bob contacts Father Mike. And he said to his disciples, take this and eat. This is my body, which has been given up for you. We all heard it scratching on the wall. And before he was given up to death, he said, drink this. During the consecration of the wine, there was a knock on the wall, three distinct knocks. This is my blood. Do this in memory of me. Father, grab the holy water. Over here. I could just sense that it was in the corner, that it was there. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. We felt we cornered this thing. It was its last hiding place, its last den, as it were. And we just pounded it with prayer. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. There was no loud clap of thunder or lightning. I think this thing was just finally spent and it gave up. Glory be to God.
God. And I took the crucifix and I put it on the floor where it had taken place, and that was the end. Amen. It seemed like a brand new day. I just felt a sense of peace. We had fought the battle, and victory had been achieved through the power of good. We're still in the house, and the house is very peaceful and very calm. The grandkids run up and down the house, and no issues with any of them being in there. I love that house. I live there now. I don't ever want to leave the house. I know it affected me and made me stronger in some ways. Ultimately, it was like trying to take part in like a psychological war. You're experiencing all these things and all this stuff's happening that everyone tells you is impossible. It was just like a living nightmare. I'm just glad we all made it out okay. I have seen and experienced the power of God and the devil. I have been in the supernatural, so I know that it's true. There's a spiritual world around us that we can't see. I've experienced it. And whether people want to believe me or not makes no difference because I, I was there. The initial plaque to mark it as a historic landmark said the Malik House. And after we went through all this, I don't want this to be the Malik House. I call it Grand Oaks Manor. Brand new house, new name. I love it. This house is ours now. It comes when you least expect it. It lives in your nightmares, building anxiety and paralyzing fear. It is so real. You're terrified. It needs to be stopped. Whatever was in the house was evil. It wanted to destroy my family. Before it's too late. Angela was fighting for her soul. If I didn't do something now, I could end up dead. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In 2010, Angela Jasmine suffers through the same recurring nightmare she's been having since she was 13. I never saw her face. I could only see the long hair and the black flowy thing. And she floated. You're totally petrified, and you don't know what to do. Jesus, help me, please save me. Jesus, help me. The only please. thing that makes it disappear is a prayer her mother Jesus, taught her as a child. Jesus, Jesus, please save me. Jesus, help me, please save me. Jesus, help me, please save me. Jesus, help me, please save me. Jesus, please help me, please save me. As soon as I said, Jesus, help me, please help me, it would vanish just like that and I could wake up. Hi, you up? Got you some breakfast? 
I'll be down in a second. <sighs> Lately, the dark dream has become more frequent and disturbing during what is supposed to be a happy time in Angela's life. Hey, babe. Did you hear me? I got breakfast ready. Okay. Angela and Steve are newlyweds who recently moved in together. After I got married to Steve, things started getting worse. Night after night, it would come, and it was like I was totally under attack. But although Angela feels close to Steve, she's chosen not to tell him. You OK? Yeah, yeah. I would not tell anybody about it, because if I told somebody about it, then it would kind of make it more real to me and make me have to face it. And I didn't ever want to face it. I just wanted to forget about it. I'll be right down. OK. She wants some pancakes. You better hustle, though. You know the way Tyler goes soon. Here you go, babe. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Pancakes, huh? Angela and Steve first met when they were teens and reconnected years later at the hospital where Angela works. In 2010, I saw Angela at the hospital and we started talking. It was like everything from when we were younger came back. Her smile lights up the room. She's very kind. She's funny. She was just overall the one. Angela's two children from her first marriage, Ava and Tyler, immediately took a liking to Steve. Look, I finished all my homework. Good job. I am so proud of you. That's my girl. The one part I really love about him is because he's strong, he's funny, and he's kind. And he really, really is cuddly. He would play some basketball with me every now and then. He would take me to baseball games. One morning, while Steve is at work, Angela has the nightmare once again. Exhausted, Angela tries to ignore it and go back to sleep. Every morning, Ava will open the door and run up and greet me at my bedside. And this particular morning, I could see her head at the foot of the bed. Good morning, princess. Ava? I sat up in bed and I'm like, oh my god. What did I just see? This, this is crazy.
I could feel somebody watching me. Ava? Tyler? I look out of the shower. There's no one there. I continue to take my shower. I could feel something else, like someone was there that wasn't supposed to be there. Angela Jasmine has suffered through the same disturbing nightmare in which she's being chased. And she's so but one morning, while she's awake, Angela feels something she can't explain. It felt like a human hand in the back of my head. But when I turned around, there's no one there. I felt petrified. I felt violated. But I never told anybody because I just wanted to forget about it. Soon, Angela begins to feel a cold, presence all the time. I'd wrap myself up in blankets like a cocoon. And no matter what, even though I had tons of blankets on me, I could still feel like cold air going over my skin underneath all those blankets. Her skin was so hot, but at the same time, she was saying how cold she was, so to me, it didn't make sense. Angela manages to get back on her feet, but is soon struck with new and bizarre symptoms. I'm a CAT scan tech at a local hospital. When I would go to work, I would get anxious. I start sweating, I get dizzy, ring in the ears, stomach pain. Angela? Angela, are you okay? Finally realizing this is more than just a common cold, Angela turns to a doctor for help. I'm not insane. This is real. This is really happening to me. She's diagnosed with agoraphobia, a fear of places and situations that might cause panic, helplessness, or embarrassment. Hey, babe. Hey. Why don't you come outside? Air might do you some good. I'm tired. Are you sure? Eventually, Angela's anxiety got so bad that she was given depression medication to help her to get through this. Will you come out and play with us? Please, please. My kids would always be like, Mommy, I want to go here. Mommy, I want to go there. Mommy, you never want to do anything. 
And I didn't, I didn't want to go anywhere. I just wanted to stay in that house and be alone all the time. Oh, not today. It's okay. I was worried about her because she was acting strange. She would act angry at me or my sister for nothing, and she would just be in a bad mood or cranky. Let's let your mom rest, okay, guys? Come on. Outside, you two. A lot of times she would try to mask it somehow, but I could still see pretty much through that, and I knew that there was a bigger issue. With each passing day, Angela sinks deeper into a dark abyss. I do everything in the dark. You would never, ever see me with a smile, ever. Something was controlling my thoughts and putting thoughts in my head. Angela Jasmine's mind has been taken over by the figure from her nightmare. It made me scared. It made me not understand why is this happening to me. I was just scared. Ange. Honey. Where am I? It was like a memory lapse. She would forget why she was even in that room. What are you doing in the dark? Did you get the kids? Yeah, the kids. I want to be in the dark. It became very hard because a lot of the times that I would bring something up to help Angela, she would completely like shut down and she would get very angry. Leave me alone. I think I was becoming a person I hated. I didn't like who I was. Over the next few weeks, tension between the newlyweds is at an all-time high. You see my keys? I swear I left them right here on the counter. Ange. Hello? Did you take my keys? I didn't take anything of yours. He would always accuse me of taking his stuff. Why do I want to take his stuff? I don't want his stuff. I swear, I don't even know why we're paying these doctors. You seem worse now. I'm not even taking these stupid meds. They're not helping. And neither are you! Stop. 
Steve believes Angela is still suffering from anxiety. Until one night, he has an experience that changes his mind. I heard the furniture move. I mean, it was hard to explain, and I really didn't know what to think. It sounded like someone was taking both of their fists and just banging on the side of the house. There was no footprints, nothing trampled. For the first time, Steve suspects something paranormal. It really woke me up and clicked that there was something there. What are you doing in here? I've been up all night waiting for you. I tried calling you four times. Look, it was a busy shift. Something's not right here. I was down here watching TV. And I heard furniture moving behind me. And then there was this loud banging outside the wall. What are you talking about? It's like a heavy fist pounding. I want to check. There's nobody. No footprints or anything. It was probably the neighborhood kids. No, you're not listening to me. I don't even I think maybe this, this house is haunted. Something's wrong, and we need to figure out how to get rid of it. And I think whatever's here. It's doing something to you. It's changing you. That's ridiculous. She got very upset with me, saying that there was nothing wrong with her house. And I was imagining it. And it was like she was in denial. I'm going to bed. Ange. It would aggravate me and get me upset with him, because I didn't want to face that there was anything wrong. I wanted just to go on with my life like there was nothing there. That night, the witch from Angela's childhood nightmare returns, and it's closer than ever before. Angela Jasmine is face to face with what's been haunting her dreams since she was a child. You literally feel 
Like it is trying to steal your soul, rip your soul out of your body. <laughs> the crying and the look of fear on her face. She was really scared. What thing? What are you talking about? For years, Angela has kept the nightmare a secret until now. The woman from my nightmares. She's real. I finally saw her face. She has these red eyes. What nightmares? All this stuff that I always pretended like it was not real, it is so real. And it's after me trying to take my soul. Angela slowly opened up to me about things that had happened to her over the years. She really started to tell me everything. I don't know how Angela dealt with it all this time, bottling it up. It's okay. You're safe now. I believe you. The next morning, the family turns to their faith for guidance. Why are we doing this? What's going on? Tyler, there's, there's something not nice in this house. And praying's gonna keep us safe, okay? Mommy, I'm scared. There's nothing to be afraid of, sweetie. We're gonna make everything better, okay? Take mommy's hand. Our Father, who art in heaven. heaven. I have a religious okay. background. I went to a Catholic school, and I knew a lot of prayers. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be, be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day. We would like bless each corner of the house. We would like pray the Hail Marys and act of contrition. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. The house really started to feel warm and loving again. And it seemed like that heavy weight that was there wasn't there whenever we prayed. Amen. But could it be that easy? Could the entity really be gone? Over the course of the next few days, Tyler's personality appears to change. All right, guys. Got some eggs coming up. He used to be happy. Now all of a sudden he was mean and miserable. It was totally not Tyler. I hate her. I hate all of you. I just felt angry and I really don't know why. I would think and like try to reason with myself why did I feel like doing that? And I just couldn't understand why. I'll see what's going on. and Tyler's dark thoughts continue.
something inside of me was controlling my thoughts, telling me to drug, and I just felt like I was doing something that I wasn't supposed to do. I was just scared at that moment because I couldn't control myself. After praying throughout their home, the Jasmines believe they are safe from a mysterious entity lurking in the shadows. But lately, 11-year-old Tyler has been acting unlike himself. Tyler, sweetie, it's time for school. What is this? Is this you? The picture was Tyler with his cartoon type, circly, crazy eyes. And he had a knife. And I'm like, what is this? Because he never draws anything like that. And I was like freaked out. Baby, why did you draw this? I didn't do it. I swear. Something told me to. When this thing started controlling me, I felt helpless because I couldn't control how I acted, what I said, what I was doing or anything. Angela fears the worst. The entity from her nightmare has returned and is now after her son. It's going to be OK. It's going to be OK. Whatever was in the house was definitely controlling his thoughts. I felt horrible. I didn't know what to do. Desperate for help, Angela's husband Steve reaches out to a coworker who does paranormal investigations on the side. My name is Eric Morin. I'm a spiritual warfare counselor for East Coast Angel Paranormal Rescue. I've reviewed my evidence. And what I believe you're experiencing is the old hag syndrome. The old hag syndrome is very common that you feel like a paralyzing feeling. It's something that builds fear and threat into that person. The paralyzing fear, the red eyes, it's a classic sign of the demonic. Demonic? Evil spirits will appear in certain forms. Sometimes they show up as an innocent little girl to build empathy. Sometimes they'll show up as an old hag to build fear. So what does that mean? What should we do? I believe we can help. Mike is Eric's colleague and a trained demonologist. But first, I would like to try something. Mike wants to conduct an experiment to detect the presence of a demon. I would like to have each of you take communion. OK? Even the kids? Yes. OK. The communion wafer is a deeply religious item. The body of Christ. A human spirit, the body of Christ, is not affected by religious items. Body of Christ. But the demonic, it's like putting pepper spray in their face. Body of Christ. <coughs> it felt like fire going down my throat. It was the worst thing I'd ever, ever tasted, and I wanted to spit it out. <coughs> Mommy, are you OK? Tyler, take your sister and go outside and play for a bit. But I don't want to. Tyler, now. 
By Angela's reaction, we immediately realized that there was a demonic that was attached to her. The demon is here. We need to perform a deliverance immediately. Angela and Steve send the kids to a relative's house while Mike sets up for the deliverance. Mike explained to me that if I didn't do something now, that it would take everything out of me. And once it's used all of me up, it would leave me for dead. Angela, I need you to sit here. Don't be afraid. Steve, I need you to stand over here. Look. You are Angela's rock, OK? You are here to fight for her. Angela, remember, you have to mean this with all of your heart, or it won't work, OK? Is everyone ready? Let us begin. Most glorious prince, St. Michael, the archangel, defend us. Defend us in battle. Defend us in battle. Be our protection. Be our protection. Against the wickedness. Against the wickedness. And snares. And snares. Of the devil. Of the devil. Defend us against the rulers of the world of darkness. Mike takes out one of the most powerful known weapons to fight a demon, a first-class holy relic, the actual blood of St. Agnes. A first-class relic holds power over the demonic because it still has part of that saint's holiness attached to it. It's part of a saint. We drive you out, whoever you may be in the name and of the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you be snatched away and driven from the church of God. For more of haunting, visit TLC.com. A demonologist is using the power of a holy relic, a saint's blood, to evict a demon from Angela Jasmine's body. Angela was actually fighting for her soul. I put the relic on the back of her neck, and she jumped and was startled. We drive you out, whoever you may be. Every tendon in her neck seemed to bulge out of her neck. In the name and of the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you be snatched away and driven from the church of God. <laughs> Angela, I need you to say these prayers with me. You need to reclaim your life. Our Father. Our Father. <laughs> Our Father. Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. I couldn't pray. It was so hard to get those words out. Who trespass. Who trespass? Who trespass? Against us. Okay. Against us. Against us. It was weird. Like, it was like trying to hold my words so I couldn't say them. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of me. Get out of me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of me now. Get out of me now. 
when it left my body, the room was brighter. I felt happy. Amen. When the deliverance was over, her face looked different. The energy was different. I, she smiled for the first time. <gasps> After she finished the prayer, I looked up at her and I saw my wife again. She was the woman that I fell in love with. <laughs> you okay? It is. You're safe now. <laughs> For the first time, I had hope. I never had hope before. But before Eric and Mike leave, Angela has questions. Although she's been suffering from the same nightmare of the old hag since she was 13, she has no idea why it attached to her. I felt like, why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. I never did anything wrong. Why me? The red eyes that you saw, it's a sign of the occult. Have you ever fooled around with witchcraft or spirit boards? Oh, my god. My grandmother's house. When I was 13, we go to my grandmother's house every weekend, and uh, we play that spirit board. I was 13. Why now? These entities tend to strike when we are happiest. It's trying to break you down. She married Steve. Steve was a threat. Steve had faith. So once Steve was in the picture, it amped up its game. It started to attack more. And when it found out it couldn't destroy you, it went after your family, eventually even Tyler. This entity started messing with the kids because it'll hurt Angela. It'll break Angela down even more. So it'll be easier for her to just give up and let this entity take her soul, which was their goal. I want to be in the dark. I owe everything to Mike and Eric. I think they saved her life. So what do we do now? Are we still in danger? We believe that after today, you are safe. But we're going to leave you some tools to keep your family safe in the future. Over the next few weeks, Angela and Steve heed Eric and Mike's advice to focus on their faith. Tyler and Ava, I took them out of the public school, and I put them in a private Catholic school. But the events take a toll on the once happy couple. Steve and Angela separate and eventually divorce. I almost forgot. Their school pictures came in today. Thought you might want to take a few to your house. Even though Steve and I aren't together anymore, we still talk, we're still friends. But sometimes things get so bad, you just can't keep going on. You got to start over fresh. Things are going good. I like my new school. I do think going through this has made me and my family closer. It does make us appreciate each other more. I feel definitely stronger as a person. And even though the marriage didn't last, as long as the demon is gone and Angela can live her life being a more positive person and being that positive role model for Tyler and Ava, that will keep me happy forever.